Hey, what's up, Vox and Hops heads? I'm Matt, the vocalist of Cryptopsy, and you're listening to my podcast, Vox and Hops, where I normally sit down with fellow metal musicians and talk about their lives, music, and craft beer. But this is another Vox and Hops Metal Brewer Talks, where I sit down with metal brewers and talk about their lives, their love of metal music, and how they got into brewing craft beer. Just want to take a moment to wish happy holidays to all you Vox and Hops heads out there. Thank you so much for supporting the podcast throughout the past year. I wish you guys all the best holidays that you could have. Take the time to relax. Take the time to be with your family. Take the time to sit down and crack open delicious craft beer and drink those while listening to metal music and scaring your family members. It's the best thing to do, trust me. Devastation on the Nation 2020 is coming up. This year's lineup is absolutely fucking incredible. It features Rotting Christ, Bork Nagar, Wolfheart, Abigail Williams, and Imperial Triumphant. And some of the shows have already sold out. So if you don't have your tickets yet, you absolutely should go out and go and grab them. You can get your tickets via the link in the description of this podcast or or you could simply go to metalfestivaltours.com. As always, the best way to support the Vox and Hops podcast is via the Vox and Hops Big Cartel page. If you're a fan of this podcast and you'd like to help me out, there's a few things that you can do. You can share it. You can subscribe to it. You can tell your metal craft beer friends about it. Or you can go to the Vox and Hops Big Cartel page and pick up some merch. That is always greatly appreciated. There would be no podcast without you, Vox and Hops heads, and I greatly, greatly appreciate all the support that I've received throughout the past year. On today's Vox and Hops Metal Brewer Talks, I am with Drew Ross from New Level Brewing. I warn you, what you are about to hear is very disturbing indeed. Hey, what's up, everybody? Today I'm with Drew Ross from New Level Brewing from Calgary, Alberta. Hey, Matt. Thanks for having me on the show. I'm super stoked to have you. Ever since you reached out to me, I've been uh, very excited about all of your products. I think that it's very, very metal, <laughs> which is <laughs> very awesome and why this works out so well for the Vox and Hops Metal Brewer Talks. Uh, let's uh, start at the beginning. Uh, let's take people down your path. Uh, how did you end up brewing metal beers well i grew up like doing home brewing with my dad so that's kind of how i got into brewing and i got into metal i don't know that's always what i gravitated towards as a teenager and then uh it was when my brother and i started going to maryland death fest in 2013 i think we've been three times in total but that was the first one we went to we spent just as much time drinking beers as we did checking out bands and there were really good bands that year but if we went to the bars and we're drinking dogfish head and stuff like that and at the time you couldn't really get that in calgary so we were just so stoked on the beer we're like we got to start homebrewing again like get out dad's old kit and start experimenting again and from there just kept going just kept pushing it so and metal and beer i mean to me i always thought the two went together really well <laughs> i mean when we went for bank loans for our business they're like a metal themed brewery i don't know about that and i was like no believe me the the two things go together much better than you would suspect so all the responses i've been getting from the pictures i've been posting since you sent me some beers have been like people are like how can i get this I am their target market. <laughs> it's just too perfect. Uh, let's just uh, jump forward a little bit into uh, the beer that we're going to be drinking today is the Krampus Christmas Ale. And you guys just posted a really funny video. I think the Krampus beating one of our cellar masters. Yeah, that is correct. How did that idea come about? How did this beer idea come about? It's an imperial eggnog stout. I have never seen an Imperial Eggnog Stout before or heard of one. Clocks in at 10% ABV. Uh, where did this idea come from? So last year we were looking to do something fun for Christmas, and we made an Eggnog Stout that we called Krampus, but last year it was 6.66%, which is a fun number, but we were like, if we increase, if we increase the alcohol a bit, I think it would be a little more metal, a little more, a little more Christmassy too. So we did that. I don't know. Um... We, we have, uh, we like our big stouts and we like sweet stouts. And so we were just thinking like eggnog, that's perfect. There's nothing more Christmas than that. And there's nothing more metal than a Krampus. So like if you put the two together, it just makes sense to us. So 
we thought it started out as an experiment, but it was a hit last year, so we brought it back this year in a can and at ten percent instead of six percent. And the artwork's badass. I love it with the the evil Krampus with his tongue sticking out. Oh yeah, I love it. He's got chain. his little whip and everything <laughs> and And you guys posted this video on your socials of Krampus someone in a Krampus costume. Beating, beating one of your employees. <laughs> <laughs> beating one of our employees, yeah. That just started out, I think we do a lot of our social media videos in our downtime. We, Whoever comes up with the goofiest idea, we usually just go with it and then post it. Our rule with social media is like, if we're not having fun, then it's not really worth doing. So <laughs> as long as we're having a good time messing around, then it's it's other people will probably find it funny too. Which is important, which is important because a lot of the time the social media part of it is something that's necessary but not necessarily the funnest part of the job it can be a bit of a drag sometimes when you're stuck trying to come up with stuff but we actually did another krampus video of krampus choking out our brewer but we decided that was like <laughs> maybe too too extreme but when, when you come up with these new brew ideas do you still home brew it first to see if it works or you guys do you go big right away uh no we don't go big right away we have a pilot system so we do like guys just like three kegs at a time which is not an insignificant amount but like it's enough that we can sell it in the tap room and get some feedback from customers and that way we we know like is it a hit or is it terrible or you know is it maybe need a little tweaking we can get we can do our own in-house r&d that way so it's been really good that way to have a smaller system that way but this year we went big on the krampus because last year was a huge hit so perfect transition let's crack it and let's see what's got Krampus Christmas Ale. The Imperial Eggnog Stout. Pour this out. I notice you guys put a lot of lactose in all your beers. <laughs> we have that reputation. Most of our beers don't actually have lactose, but we are one of the only ones in Calgary doing a lot of lactose beers. I'm not sure why that is. It's an ingredient I've always kind of found appealing, so I've always liked it. So, cheers. Cheers. It smells like Christmassy. Mmm. It's good. It's boozy. It's spicy, but the spices really come out there. Yeah. You get some nutmeg and some cinnamon. Mm -hmm. The lactose really gives it that extra thickness mm -hmm. that you want out of something called eggnog, right? You want it as thick as possible. Exactly, yes. Also, a ton of oats in there to add more body to it as well. As, it, as this stout warms up more, you're going to get more of those spices out of it. Anyone that's listened to the podcast knows very well that stouts never go in my fridge. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, I, I've given up on them because I always drink and I'm like, ugh. It's too cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, ever go in your fridge. You know, that's smart. Yeah, most people drink it way too cold, so. It, it frustrates me in a tap room when I go to, especially like a good tap room, when they're serving stouts at the same temperature as all the other beers. I know it's like an extra system that they have to install, but it's, it's always frustrating to me as as a craft beer nerd when I want yeah, my stout we, when we I Yeah, we usually it. pour it and then we're like, just let it wait a couple minutes and like, sip on it and it'll change character over time so that's right that's i definitely right. i definitely feel it for sure i've gotten to the point where I'll, I'll order my stout but i'll order another beer at the same time and i'll just let my stout sit there and no, that's, the that <laughs> that's how i go <laughs> let's talk about the calgary beer scene now, how is that developing over the past few years uh, were you guys one of the early ones did you come in in the middle let's let's hear about that guess we came sort of just past the middle maybe uh calgary's kind of crazy right now there's I don't actually have a number of how many breweries there are. It's hard to keep up. There's just been like an explosion in the past couple of years. So it's been pretty insane. Um, but we thought we were going to be like one of the only ones to open up when we did, like over a year ago. And then by the time we'd opened up, there'd been like at least 10 or 15 others that had opened up before us. And even after we opened up, there's been even more. So it's all over the place. But in my opinion, that makes it pretty exciting because... You have to up your game. You can't really coast. You got to come up with good stuff and you got to have your little niche. And there's some really good beers in Calgary. So it definitely pushes us to be the best that we can. And to it's exciting. It's exciting when you're like you, you get like a inspired by your competitors, I suppose. So it's been a good thing. Which is another one of those factors where beer and metal work so well together. Whereas... I'll listen to my friend's new release and I'll be like, oh shit, that's so good. I want to take a little bit of that and then move upon and make it my own and then try to one up them in a respectful way. Absolutely. Yeah. If you just keep pushing each other to do better and better, I think that's, that's good for everybody. Right. So in a positive I'm happy way. with yeah. that in a positive way for sure. 
and then it is it is cool to see everybody find their own niche too like no, there's like a gluten-free brewery in Calgary, which is like its own thing. And then there's people who just focus on IPAs. And we're trying to do IPAs and more pastry stouts. But we even have like a a brewery now that's specializing in barrel-aged beers. And I never knew that was coming to Calgary, but that's pretty cool. Who would have been like the big precursor craft brewer in Calgary? Big Rock would probably be the most famous one. And then Wild Rose was pretty big and they were bought out by Sleeman's last year um tool shed is another big one village village was a big one um these probably aren't ones you'd see outside of Alberta I don't think but <laughs> but um those are like the the big OGs I suppose and which ones were like your inspiration you came back from Maryland Death Fest and did you try to hunt for craft beer in Calgary at that point because you got the bug or were you already drinking craft beer when you were going? Um, I had started drinking craft beer before I was going. And it was really when I was in the States that I realized there were these like crazy stouts I'd never had before. And maybe more of the extreme IPAs, like Dogfish Heads, 120 Minute. Um, in Calgary, I think at that time, there's a few breweries, but it was more like Blondes and maybe like a Dark Ale or something like that. Like good beer but not like pushing the envelope in any sort of stylistic sense um but ever since then there's been like more and more like big hazy ipas and things like that the big trend in calgary right now seems to be uh hazy ipas that's that's everywhere and that's what rules and i'm okay with that because i love them i i love them to death uh i don't think that that trend is going anywhere no i don't think so we have one called haze lord and when we brewed it i thought it would just be a one-off i'm like this isn't gonna stay and then it quickly became like our number one seller so we're like well it'd be pretty silly to get rid of it so and i'm not i'm not complaining i'm happy to have it around all the time talk us through haze lord what what uh you say it's a new england ipa is it a double dry hopped? What what hops go into it? Do you alter the hops from 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 batch to batch? You know. So the hops themselves are mostly Galaxy and Mosaic, so you get that nice tropical flavor to it. Um, we do do a double dry hop, and we also do a primary uh, day one dry hop. So the first day we put it in the tank, just as we put in yeast, we put in hops too, and that makes it a little hazier, maybe a little danker. It's a five percent beer, so it's a little less filling than. Um, maybe a lot of the New Englands that are out there that are like super, super full and almost like a meal. Uh, I like Hazelord because I could have like four pretty easily. So it's almost like in between a lawnmower beer and a, and a New England. Uh, that's that's the Hazelord, yeah. Lots of oats in that one too. Uh, it's a really fun beer. Also with bands and brewers, sometimes you, you work really hard at something and then it ends up being a flop, it ends up being a failure. What would be your biggest mistake when you were brewing a beer that you would wish you could go back and fix Ooh, uh well we brewed a pale ale called power wolf and uh it was in my opinion a really good beer and i think most brewers agreed it's really good beer we tried to make it like a really bitter american style pale ale kind of like dale's pale ale and uh i think it kind of it's been mixed reviews we kind of thought it would take off because we loved it so much and other people, I think the audience right now is more into the hazy thing. So I think we just kind of misjudged our, our audience a little bit, especially because we put out like milkshake IPAs and hazy IPAs. When we put out this like crystal clear, super bitter in your face, pale ale, people were like, this is not what I ordered. This is not what I expected, which is Did you do the, yeah. the R&D version? We did, and, and the R&D version was a hit. So I was kind of surprised. But when we put it in the can, it was... It's, you know, just as good a brew, I thought, but it was not a hit. So sometimes you never know. I think the trends in craft beer are changing a lot faster than they used to. Being a, a metal brewer, do you listen to metal music while you brew? And if you do, who do you listen to? Oh, absolutely. Um, who do we listen to right now? This year I've been listening to a lot of death metal. Normally, like, I'm a stoner, doom kind of guy, but I think... 2019 there's something going on there's just so much good new death metal coming out it's kind of crazy so anything on the 20 buck spin label i think has been really good like um fetid or uh 
Tomb Mold, like those bands are so, so killer. So I've been just burning those to death. That like resurgence of original death metal sound by a bunch of young yeah. kids. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I think it's super fun. Yeah. Have you ever thought of making a brew for a band? Have you done that in the past? Like a band collaboration brew? Yeah, we did one uh, with a couple local bands. We did a uh, dark cherry saison with a band called Woodhawk. Shout out to Woodhawk. They're like a stoner metal band from Calgary. They just released their EP, Violent Nature. Um, they're also big homebrewers, so it was like super fun. It was their idea, and I was like, yeah, of course. Like, I really do honestly love their music. So, And they're big customers, so we were like, yeah, come brew a beer with us. We did a dark cherry saison, and it turned out really well. And that was all uh, Turner's idea. He's the, he's the lead singer of the band. And then, um, yeah, that would be the one we did with a band. So that, that would be the one. That would be the first one we did with a band. And then we did do a special brew uh, with Village Brewery for, it was like a Black Brut IPA. We called it Total Brutality. And then uh, we drank it all in one night because we had the band uh, Wake from Calgary play, <laughs> and, which was really sick because they're one of my top bands for sure. And then they played in our tap room, which was really cool. That's sick. That's sick. If you had, could do a dream brew with any band, what band would that be? What style would it be? And what would you call it? Maybe like I Hate God, we'd do like an I Hate Hops. Mm. I think that would be pretty fun. Make it a lager. <laughs> In a whiskey barrel or something like that. <laughs> Just something really brutal in that respect. That would be with, pretty with fun. With no hops. Yeah. With no hops. Yeah. <laughs> Can you make a beer or, with no hops? Is that possible? Uh, yeah, you can. You have to use something to bitter it. Like you could use spruce tips or there are Groot beers, I believe. There you, um, go. you have to use something to bitter it. There Otherwise, it would be too sweet. But you don't have to use hops. It's a spruce beer in whiskey barrels. The, the I hate hops. <laughs> you never know. Or if you could bring all the original members of Pantera back to life, like maybe do something and age it in a Crown Royal barrel or who knows. There's... The great thing about being a metal brewery is, you know, there's so much material that I can mine for marketing. <laughs> it's so much fun. That's why I love it. It's, every, it's every, just too much fun, right? I'm so. looking at this and then behind it I got the cookies and corpse paint, which is just too funny. You mentioned pastry stouts before, and this is something that I'm not sure about. I know a lot about craft beer, but I'm not sure about this. When you say pastry stouts, are there actual pastries in the stout, or is that... With our cookie beer, there is. Generally, no, pastry stout does not mean there actually is. It started out as a derogatory term of brewers being like, that's not a beer, it's just a pastry. And the brewers who were brewing it tried to own it and be like, yeah, it's a pastry stout, it's its own style. So typically, like, it's super heavy beer, high alcohol, tons of sugar, and tons of adjuncts, which makes it taste more like a pastry, like you're eating a donut or something like that than you are drinking a traditional stout. Um... We've tried a couple other ones. Like, I always like to mess around with peanut butter. I haven't quite hit the nail on the head when it comes to peanut butter. I can't quite make it work the way I want to in my head, but getting closer. There's nothing up here that can hit. I remember when I did uh, Cannibal Corpse, Obituary Abysmal Dawn, 2016, we stumbled across these peanut butter stouts in the States, and I was like, this is my new favorite style of beer. And then I came home, and, and there's none of them. They don't exist. There's actually one now, but... It's still not quite there. Well, we get Belching Beaver over here. Have you tried that one? I have tried that one, and it is good, yes. Yeah, it is really good. We get that one, but... And that's kind of the gold standard of peanut butter beers. I don't know. I don't know how quite how they get it to taste just like peanut butter. You'll have to, you'll have to go do a collab. Yeah, good luck with that, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. You never know. Think positive, yeah. Yeah, I never know. I don't know. I've been researching some different techniques. We've tried, like, peanut butter powder, peanuts actual peanut butter so you can get the peanut butter taste it's just hard to kind of make it stick around it's hard not to like kill the head on your beer and have it too oily it's a science it's a science it's trial and error right at least it's fun <laughs> it's definitely super fun uh let's talk about that tap room you guys play shows in your tap room i think that's super cool uh what is your capacity how many people can come if you have a show let's talk about that Okay, so we have like um, our little tap room. It our max capacity is sixty people, so oh, it's cool. it's super small. So when we do do shows, it's like super intimate and packed, and we usually manage to sell out, which is great. Um, it's kind of like an old school 
like a house party band <laughs> you know like people pay 10 bucks five bucks for a show five bucks for a beer and then we all cram into the room and it's it's loud as hell so it's it's pretty fun it's pretty uh cool experience too i think for fans and for bands because afterwards there's nowhere really to go so like you get to hang with the band and have a few beers sell some merch it's been good and calgary unfortunately has had a lot of live music places closed down so there aren't a ton of heavy places for heavy bands to play and we kind of just came along at the right time <laughs> given our size i don't know if we would have been popular years ago but there's nowhere really else to play and you know we're down with heavy music so it's been a pretty cool thing to have happen what has been your favorite show that you've had probably having wake play in our tap room <laughs> that just blew me away i couldn't really believe it uh they're big fans of craft beer and they'd been in a bunch of times and i met them and they're super nice guys so when i asked them i wasn't really sure if they'd say yes but they're like yeah of course no problem and they're just so good live so and they had a great band called uh feeding from edmonton they're a sick death metal band from over there they opened for them and i'd never heard of them before but they blew me away and big fan i like to represent them now i feel like uh, canada always gets like the screwed almost when it comes to big north american metal tours it will come up and hit montreal it will hit toronto it will hit vancouver but it will rarely come up into the prairies and alberta yeah we definitely get the short end of the stick that way i think it's because the states below you sadly suck <laughs> <laughs> i think so i think so yeah when you walk into a craft beer place that's not yours what is the style of beer that you gravitate towards if i just want to have like one beer i'll probably get an ipa because i just i love ipas that's my favorite style and i like to see how different people do it and i like to see if they have something that you know maybe i should be thinking about doing um, but generally, if I walk into, like, a new brewery or something, I try to try, like, a range of beers. And Do you do the tasters or do you drink them all? Um, I'm not a big flight guy. I'm not a big taster guy. Um, I try to have an argument against it. Like, I don't think you can fully appreciate a beer until you've had a full pint. Do you guys serve tasters? Oh, definitely, definitely. Like, we make most of our money off of tasters, right? No, I'm not going to make a stand. <laughs> it's just more like my personal preference. Um, I'm not a huge got flight guy I'll, I'll maybe get like a sleeve that's as small as they'll go and i'll try and try at least three but yeah that's that, but that's a personal thing i think so so sometimes i find like i enjoy a taster but there's no way i could drink a whole pint so or vice versa sometimes you can get nailed if you order a pint without tasting it first <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's really just an excuse for me to drink more beer <laughs> and more alcohol. So. Do, you, do you still homebrew now, even though you have everything you have? No, it's homebrewing's messy, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's easier to do it in a warehouse. <laughs> so you can have a drain and you have water and you have chemicals handy. So, no, I don't homebrew anymore. Um, I try to get my inspiration from food right now. Really? So like, yeah, like the Cookies and Corpse paint beer. It's like a mint Girl Guide cookie flavor. I had that inspiration from going out for ice cream with my kid. We had a mint Girl Guide ice cream, and I thought, man, this is so good. If it was a beer, it would be even better. So we tried it. I think it works. Did it, did it work the first time, or did you have to, like, dance through a few things? First time I tried it, I tried it with mint Oreos, and it was maybe so minty it was more like goat mouthwash or something like that <laughs> and the oreos were super oily and they kind of like killed it so and then we tried a few different uh techniques for getting that mint flavor in there that's twice that you mentioned oily is that like beers becoming oily is that like a brewer's nemesis um not necessarily nemesis but like if you have a lot of oil from something like peanut butter it'll kill all of the the nice head you would get on a nice beer which really brings it down i like a nice thick head on any kind of beer style when you go up into higher alcohols you're not going to have that higher head anyway but you definitely don't want like an oily residue on top you you definitely notice it and it just wouldn't taste as good well drew i'm really happy that uh we hooked up we got to share yeah. the krampus christmas ale the imperial eggnog stout it's really good uh the the spices are really interesting and it's fun and it's it's a, it's a holiday beer and I, it's a holiday beer and it's not one of those weird German ones that I'm not in love with. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm <laughs> glad you like it. So cheers, cheers to you. Cheers, brother. Yeah, Thank cheers, you so man. much. Thank you. 
Hey, thank you all so much for listening right to the end. You know that I love and appreciate that. Drew, such a cool dude, such a great chat. Uh, so happy that I got to taste some of your brews. Absolutely amazing, very interesting. I love the metal theme brews. More breweries should be doing it. It's just two things that just work so well together. Metal, craft beer. I can't think of another perfect combination. If you're in Calgary, if you're around Calgary, if you're in Alberta, you should absolutely check out New Level Brewing. They're doing some very interesting stuff. And if you're in Calgary, you should absolutely go to some of the shows that he's hosting in his tap room. I know that the next time I swing through Calgary, that's where I'm going to stop. If you are a metal brewer, or if you know a metal brewer, please point them my way. I want to talk to you. I want you to be a guest on the Vox and Hops podcast. Metal brewers are people that like metal music and who brew craft beer or who work in the craft beer industry. You guys could send me a message on my social medias, on Instagram or on Facebook, or you could simply send me an email to matt at voxandhops.com. That's M-A-T-T at V-O-X-A-N-D-H-O-P-S dot com. And I'll let you know how this whole process works. I hope that you guys have a very, very, very Merry Christmas tomorrow. I hope that you have some time with your family. Sit back, relax, enjoy the holidays, take a break, crack open some craft beer, listen to some metal, and that way you'll be enjoying life, metal, and craft beer. Cheers, Vox and Opsets. Oh,